trying to, and has also taken presidents aside like Reagan and tried to convince them of exactly the argument you're making so that he would spend hundreds of billions of dollars on SDI. Right. And I think this gets, into serious, this gets into serious policy issues. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and, and I think I have, re I have responsibilities here that, that you're not aware of. So to say I'm irresponsible, you don't know what my responsibilities are. I and therefore, I, no, yeah. you do not. I wanna, and so what I'm saying here is that... I want to ask a question, which a, is very... I, I want to take this back. Now, just w wait a second. Let's cool down. And I want to just make an analogy. Now, an analogy that I sometimes use, and it usually results in nods of agreement, is that we're like fishermen on a South Sea island in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, having believed for generations that we're the only people in the whole world. And we're sitting around a campfire cooking our fish. And we're trying to figure out... That, 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 that big metal ship on the horizon, what do they want with us? That metal bird in the, in, that keeps on circling around our island, what are they doing? And is it real? And did you see it? And all this kind of stuff. And we're trying to figure out the intentions, assuming that we believe in their existence, of these other beings that we're suddenly starting to realize might exist in our universe on this little tropical island. Now, the problem is that if we really do look at this as a human situation, which is quite real, really, what experience do we have as South Sea Island fishermen to figure out maybe they want to cut our trees down, maybe they want to save us because the sea level is rising and they want to take us to another island, maybe they want our minerals, or maybe they want to convert us to Christianity, maybe they want to eat us, kill us, or maybe they want to make friends. And how do we know and the danger is, and this is a question now, the danger is that I'm here around this campfire with you guys, and I hear you saying, those other men in, in those big ships and those metal birds must be friendly. And I'm saying, wait a minute, we need to be a little bit careful here, because actually, you know, even though we do get into fights on this little island every now and then, how do we know we can trust them? Maybe we can, maybe we can't. What's your experience? That's, how com that's, that's an attempt to characterize by analogy how complex this is. That's why I said that it was irresponsible, as I would do if I was around that campfire, as an elder of this community saying, they've got to be friendly, we've got to trust them, we've got to trust them, we've got to trust them. This is what the Spanish said to the conquistadores. Yes, but your, 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 your metaphor is, again, an anthropocentric projection onto something that I think is not applicable. And I think that uh, in addition to that, uh, our, I keep coming back to this, not only my personal experience, but the experience of uh, hundreds of people, thousands of people that we have had involved with our diplomatic contact programs have not had any of these the sort of experiences that would lend us to believe that there are civilizations that are hostile to the earth and to humanity. Uh, on the other hand, I have had many sources describe to me the program life forms, the military involvement with, with hoaxing abductions, a false flag operation to create a, a, an alien threat that we can unite against. So I have to go on the knowledge and the experience I have. And it isn't just observing something at afar, because we've actually had contact. And we've actually had more information than something just floating up above the island. So, so, so the analogy breaks down very quickly. And, that's, and, and even if there was this potential for uh, one or more of these planetary civilizations to be of concern to us, my answer would still be the same. There needs to be engagement. There needs to be a, a diplomatic uh, détente. There needs to be a rapprochement. There needs to be an enlightened approach to this where we, we really move out of a sort of uh, a duality that leads to conflict on Earth. I think that regardless of what your assessment of the agenda, the path of wisdom and safety is that. Because okay, we, I don't, we, we don't disagree with that, yeah. okay? I agree Let, fully. Let's and, talk about where we agree. And it needs to be in the agree. public domain. Yeah, okay. Right. So um, yeah. You know, I mean, we certainly agree on the the end objective, okay? The end objective from our point of view, okay? We are not part of the military industrial complex, okay? We're doing what we do because we believe in truth, mm -hmm. because we're dedicating our lives and indeed our lives literally have been in danger because of what we believe and, and we do it on a daily basis and you of all people should understand this. So we're not taking this lightly and our end result is not 
to be what they may desire as their ultimate end game. In other words, we're not here to support their end game, and we're not naive about what we're doing either. Um, so neither of those things is true. Okay, we are not trying to promote a, a sort of a fear-based paradigm such that people get into a place where the only thing they can think of is to shoot ET in, a, in the head to be graphic or to, you know, allow for space-based re weaponry. I mean, we, you know, basically agree with, with your philosophy in that way wholeheartedly. Um, and in fact, I would say we are dedicating our lives to that. However, on the other hand, we are also not going to sit here and pretend that we know all the answers. And we're also not going to assume that all contact is positive and, and not... You know, on the contrary to what you're, you're going to assume, whatever you yeah, think. Uh, obviously we are. Yeah. But 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 in terms of this discussion, and for the for the reason that we, you know, you're sort of saying our blog thing, our posting was you found offensive because we're saying what you're saying on stage, and again, you're on stage, you're on stage actually more often than we are, far more often, and I have to say, therefore, your responsibility is great. And perhaps your approach is a bit simplistic in that you are assuming that if you talk about the potential that there are other things going on or potential for other ways of looking at the, the question, that the jump that the whole audience out there is going to make immediately is to fear and panic and that they're going to jump on this bandwagon of the military industrial complex and all go out and you know grab their guns and knives and want to go shoot ET and fight with each other and, and other worlds and so on. That's but not the problem or, is, is that that's my, not, you know, in I'm, other I'm, words, you're going. I'm acutely aware a, that my position is the minority position. Okay, uh, I'm, uh, I'm acutely aware. Actually, that, that's not true either. And and that I in, mean, there and, are plenty of people out there. They're advocating peace and love and getting on their cars and jumping up and down. Please, ET, come save us because you're all good. No, I would actually <laughs> I, I would I would challenge you to look at Hollywood, the UFO community the books and videos that are out on this subject, they are overwhelmingly negative and terrifying. And I think that this is one of the problems is that, um, I, so. I, I think that one of the problems okay. is that we have to uh, look at this with a long view. Uh, and, and the long view, to, as I see it, and this is all I can do is, is go by my own moral compass and what I think is right. Uh, I don't think I'm irresponsible, I don't think I'm simplistic and all these sort of characterizations. I think that I have a responsibility to uh, help articulate a path forward that is wise and that does not redound to further fear and panic and negativity on this planet, but that moves us forward in a positive way and that can lead to what I am certain will be the future for this planet. And that's one of of not only world peace, but universal peace, and a wholly, uh, completely new uh, uh, transformative civilization on this planet that isn't thousands of years off or even decades off now. I think it's very, very near. And so I think that that's what I wish to articulate. And, and uh, th there's no simplicity to it. Uh, it's actually a rather complex concept. And, uh, and it's, it's, an, it's also a way of engaging spiritually. I want to share a dream I had. I don't share this very often, but um, back when my friend Sherry and I and another member of my team all got metastatic cancer at the same month and we were all going to die, she died. <coughs> but she was still alive. And Bill Colby had died, been killed, trying to help us just before this. And it was a terrible time, actually, for me. And I had a dream, and of course, I'm human, I was angry, I was mad as hell at what was happening to us. Um, and I had a dream, I, I, think, I, forget, I think I was in England doing some crop circle work, and in the dream, there were these giant lions um, that were stalking me, and they were going to try to kill me. And it's funny because uh, Dr. Tom Beard talks about the lions of this cabal, and I'd never heard him use that term at the time I had the dream, but here were these huge lions, and they were stalking me, and they were going to kill me. And it was this lucid, lucid, full-color dream. And I didn't run. I didn't get angry. 
I didn't have hate in my heart. I opened my heart and went to a, a, a place of this place of universal love and consciousness, and I engaged each lion in their eyes. And we, and we were doing this, following each other around. And eventually, they became so engaged with that energy that even though they had huge claws and fangs, they actually flipped over on their back. And I was petting them like this, like they were big pussy cats. And we you know, had become uh, completely diffused that situation. I use that as an analogy of a sort of an Aikido, spiritually, of, of the engagement I'm, um, I'm endeavoring in, I both with the public, with Majestic, with the visitors. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm doing. I and understand. That's it in and I think that's a great, I, I think that's a great, great description of what, of, of your approach and what's motivating you. And thank you very much for that. Thank you for sharing thank that, you. Stephen. Thank Stephen you. Greer. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Take appreciate it. it. Thank you.